Level zero. It doesn't start with satellites. It doesn't start with supercomputers. It starts with a shovel, a wooden door, a dark space carved into the ground. For centuries, before forecasting and warning systems, the only defense against a tornado was the Earth itself. Families dug cellars into fields. Farmers built root cellars, not just for potatoes, but for survival. When the sky turned black and the wind began to scream, whole families ran barefoot across dirt, clutching candles, and threw themselves underground. It wasn't safety, it was hiding. Wooden beams cracked above their heads. Dust rained down. The world they had built, barns, fences, even homes, might be gone when they climbed back up. In the Great Plains, where twisters became routine, these underground sanctuaries weren't luxuries. They were lifelines. Generations grew up knowing the sound of a trap door slamming as wind howled like a freight train overhead. But basements and storm cellars weren't invincible. Flooding could drown them. Poor construction could collapse them. For many, survival depended on luck as much as design. This is level zero. The basement door, the oldest defense, dug into the earth itself. If you live in tornado country, having a basement, storm cellar, or reinforced underground space is still one of the most reliable defenses. If you don't have one, identify the innermost room on the lowest floor of your home. No windows, no doors. Sometimes, survival is about picking the one wall that will hold. Level one, it's not a shelter, it's not a wall, it's a sound. After World War II, American cities invested in civil defense sirens, loud mechanical howls designed to warn of incoming bombers. But when nuclear fears faded, those same sirens found a second life, tornado warnings. The system wasn't perfect. The sirens weren't meant to tell you where the storm was or how strong. They weren't even guaranteed to reach every ear. They simply cut through silence with dread. A rising wail that told you, run, hide, now. In the 1950s and 60s, these sirens became common across the Midwest and the South. Their sound could reach miles, shaking windows and freezing people in their tracks. It was enough to send farmers racing off tractors, mothers pulling children inside, entire towns abandoning streets. They bought time, not safety, just minutes. And in tornadoes, minutes decide everything. But there were flaws. People grew desensitized. Sirens sometimes cried wolf. At night, many never heard them at all. A defense mechanism is only useful if it triggers action, and too often, people ignored the warning until it was too late. This is level one, the siren, a warning cry that gives you minutes, not safety. Never ignore a siren. Treat every warning as if it's the one that matters. Pair siren alerts with weather radios and mobile notifications so you'll never miss a warning, even in the dead of night. Level two, level two, the radar. For the first time, the storm wasn't a mystery, it was visible on a glowing screen. A storm can't be stopped, but it can be seen. For most of history, tornadoes struck without warning. Farmers in the 1800s believed twisters came from evil winds. Towns were shredded in seconds with no clue of what was approaching. That changed when Doppler radar entered the picture. Developed in the mid-20th century, Doppler radar could detect not just rain, but motion. It revealed swirling patterns inside supercells, allowing meteorologists to identify the birth of rotation before a funnel even touched the ground. For the first time, people could see a tornado not with their eyes, but on a glowing radar screen. In the 1970s and 80s, as the technology spread, warnings became sharper. Meteorologists could call out danger zones. They could tell towns, something is coming. You have 15 minutes. It wasn't perfect. False alarms still happened, but tornadoes were no longer invisible predators. They could be tracked, they could be mapped. And in 2011, during the Joplin EF-5 tornado in Missouri, Doppler radar gave enough warning that hundreds survived by sheltering in time. The storm still killed 158 people, but without radar, it would have been far worse. Pay attention to weather reports and apps during severe weather. Follow trusted meteorological sources especially when your region is under tornado watch. Seconds of awareness, a warning spotted on radar, can mean the difference between life and death. Level three, level three, the safe room, concrete and steel, engineered to defy even the strongest winds. By the late 20th century, storm cellars weren't enough. Tornadoes had grown more devastating in populated areas, 
and people needed protection inside their own homes. Enter the FEMA Safe Room, a reinforced steel and concrete vault designed to withstand EF5 winds. Unlike a basement, which could collapse under debris, a safe room was engineered for one purpose, to keep people alive, no matter what was happening outside. Bolted to foundations, sealed with airtight doors, lined with heavy reinforcement, these rooms could survive winds over 250 miles per hour. They don't protect your house. Your roof might fly away. Your walls might splinter. But inside a safe room, families can survive the unthinkable. They've become the modern evolution of the pioneer root cellar, a bunker for the age of engineering. And in countless tornado outbreaks, from Moore, Oklahoma in 1999 to the Tuscaloosa, Birmingham outbreak in 2011, safe rooms have proven themselves. Homes vanished. Families inside the vault walked away unharmed. If you can, invest in a FEMA-approved safe room. It may cost thousands, but in a tornado, it buys something priceless. Survival. Even in the deadliest winds, nature can unleash. Level 4. Not everyone has a bunker, so towns build one. In Tornado Alley, community shelters became the lifelines for those who couldn't afford private safe rooms. Schools built underground bunkers. Town halls reinforced gyms. Trailer parks dug communal storm shelters in the earth. When the sirens wail, entire neighborhoods flood into these concrete sanctuaries. Hundreds of people crammed shoulder to shoulder, sitting on cold floors, waiting for the storm to pass overhead. It feels less like hiding and more like submerging into a submarine. Everyone sealed in, hoping the walls hold. During outbreaks in Alabama and Mississippi, these community shelters saved hundreds. Whole trailer parks were flattened above ground, but everyone who had gone below walked out alive. But you have to reach them. In many tragedies, people died in cars or fields, trying to drive towards shelter they couldn't reach in time. The defense mechanism only works if you know where it is. Before the funnel forms, know the location of your nearest community shelter. Don't wait until the sirens scream to plan your route. Seconds matter and hesitation kills. Level 5. Sometimes defense isn't underground. It's structural. For decades, houses in Tornado Alley were built light, fast, and cheap. Wooden frames, weak roofs, garage doors that popped like soda can lids when the wind surged. One pressure breach and the house exploded from the inside. That changed after devastating twisters in the late 20th century. Building codes toughened. In Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas, new homes began using hurricane clips, metal ties anchoring the roof to the frame. Garage doors were reinforced to resist suction. Windows were tested against flying debris. The results were clear. Houses built to code fared better. They weren't invincible, but they didn't disintegrate as easily. Even if the roof blew off, the structure sometimes stayed standing long enough for people inside to survive. Stronger building codes won't stop tornadoes, but they can stop homes from becoming coffins. If you're building or renovating in a tornado-prone region, follow tornado-resistant building codes. Reinforce roofs, garage doors, and windows. A stronger house can buy you crucial minutes or save your life outright. Level 6. It's not a wall. It's not a shield. It's a car barreling toward the funnel. Storm chasers are more than thrill-seekers. They are mobile defense systems. With radar in hand and cameras rolling, they drive straight into danger, relaying what they see to meteorologists in real time. While radar shows motion, only a human eye can confirm a funnel. A storm chaser shouting debris cloud on the ground can mean the difference between a vague warning and a confirmed emergency. Their reports by towns extra minutes. Time to dive into shelters, to pull kids out of classrooms, to lock hospital wings down. It's dangerous work. Chasers have died in collisions, floods, and even from the tornadoes themselves. Yet their contributions are undeniable. Every report sent to the National Weather Service sharpens the warning system. Every photo, every video, every live stream. Evidence that the monster is real. Storm chasers don't stop tornadoes, but they help people stop underestimating them. Don't rely only on radar apps. Pay attention to verified storm chaser networks and official updates. They may give you the most immediate confirmation that a tornado is on the ground and heading your way. Level 7. What if we didn't just watch from the ground? What if we flew into the storm? Today, researchers are beginning to test drones as storm scouts. Unlike human chasers, they don't fear debris or death. They can fly directly into supercells, carrying sensors to measure pressure, wind shear, and humidity. Some are designed to be sacrificed, dropped into a tornado's path like offerings, recording data until they're shredded. In 2013, 
scientists deployed disposable probes into twisters in Kansas. For the first time, they captured direct measurements from inside the beast. The data confirmed what radar had hinted at. Tornado winds aren't smooth, they're chaotic, pulsing, with surges that rip apart structures in bursts. Drones are the next evolution. Imagine fleets of autonomous aircraft launching as soon as a storm system forms. Hundreds of eyes in the sky, mapping every gust, sending live warnings to towns below. They can't stop the tornado, but they can sharpen predictions down to the neighborhood. Speculative, yes, but prototypes already exist, buzzing at the edge of storms. The first generation of robotic chasers, as drone research matures, communities will benefit from faster, more localized alerts. For now, the takeaway is simple. Stay connected to official weather networks. When drones join the warning system, those who listen will survive first. Level 8. What if defense wasn't hiding, but interference? Since the mid-20th century, scientists have dreamed of altering the sky itself. If tornadoes are born from rotating thunderstorms, then what if you disrupted the storm before it could tighten into a funnel? Cloud seeding was one early attempt. By dispersing silver iodide or dry ice into clouds, researchers hoped to alter rainfall patterns, weaken updrafts, or prevent rotation. In theory, you could starve a storm before it spun. In practice, results were inconsistent. The weather is too complex. Chaos resists control. But the idea never died. Even today, in secret labs and speculative papers, engineers ask, can storms be diffused? Could lasers, sound waves, or electromagnetic pulses destabilize the vortex? Could massive wind farms redirect airflow, bleeding the energy that tornadoes feed on? None of it is real yet. None of it is proven. But the dream is seductive that instead of sheltering underground, humanity could stand up and fight the storm itself until storm modification becomes real, if it ever does. Our best interference is preparation. Survival kits, emergency drills, and knowing safe zones remain the only defenses we can trust. Level 9. It sounds like science fiction, because it is. The tornado shield. The idea that walls, physical or technological, could block or break a tornado's formation. Some futurists imagine miles of wind turbines planted across Tornado Alley, not just for power, but as disruption. The spinning blades would siphon energy from the air, reducing the instability that fuels supercells. Others dream bigger. Plasma walls, invisible shields of ionized air that could scatter funnels before they descend. Speculative projects have sketched out titanic barriers stretching across states. Artificial mountains that would disrupt storm paths changing how wind flows across the plains. The cost, astronomical. The practicality, questionable. But the fantasy persists that one day, walls could replace sirens. We've always built walls against enemies. The idea that we could one day build them against the sky itself is both absurd and strangely inevitable. Until real shields exist, remember the shield you do have, knowledge. Evacuation routes, shelter locations, and reinforced rooms are the closest things we have to walls against nature. Level 10. The storm arrives. You don't have minutes. You have seconds. Artificial intelligence is beginning to change how we predict weather. Traditional radar takes time. Human forecasters interpret data, issue warnings, and broadcast alerts. That chain costs precious minutes. AI breaks it. Already, machine learning algorithms are being trained on decades of storm data, learning patterns, recognizing signals invisible to human eyes. In the future, AI may issue hyperlocal warnings, not just a tornado is coming to your county, but your street will be hit in seven minutes. Imagine a phone buzzing in your pocket with a personal countdown, no sirens, no vague maps, just direct instructions. Go now, this is your last chance. Some researchers envision automated evacuation systems, traffic lights switching to clear escape routes, drones guiding people toward shelters, smart homes locking themselves against pressure surges. The entire defense system orchestrated by machine intelligence, speculative in scale, but emerging in fragments. The AI Guardian won't stop tornadoes, but it may give us a kind of superhuman foresight, warnings sharp enough to outpace chaos. Even now, use mobile weather apps that issue live alerts. As AI forecasting grows, staying plugged into official systems may one day give you the edge of survival, personalized warnings before the funnel forms. Level 11. What if we stopped running from storms and simply built below them? Imagine a city where every building is underground, 
Streets are tunnels, homes are carved into earth, schools and hospitals exist beneath layers of soil where wind can't touch, like ant colonies scaled up to human civilization. This is the speculative dream of the underground city, not a storm shelter, but a permanent lifestyle shift. People wouldn't rush to hide when sirens sounded, they'd already live beneath the danger. Tornadoes would scour empty streets above, tearing apart only the abandoned shells of structures left on the surface. It's not science fiction entirely. Underground malls exist in Montreal and Tokyo. Subterranean data centers hum beneath European cities. The technology exists, but scaling it to whole towns in Tornado Alley would cost billions. And yet, the idea lingers. A civilization that doesn't dodge storms. It ignores them, immune by design. Until underground living becomes practical, partial steps are still possible. Basements, reinforced parking structures, and community bunkers provide the same principle in miniature. The Earth as Armor, Level 12. The most radical idea doesn't defend against tornadoes. It prevents them from existing at all. Speculative geoengineering imagines reshaping the atmosphere itself. Tornadoes form when warm, moist air collides with cold, dry air, creating instability and rotation. But what if we changed those conditions before storms ever sparked? Some proposals suggest massive atmospheric nets, fleets of high-altitude balloons or drones releasing aerosols to stabilize temperatures. Others dream of giant orbital mirrors that could redirect sunlight, warming or cooling regions to cut off tornado fuel, even planetary-scale weather control, altering humidity, shifting jet streams, controlling climate like a thermostat, it's the ultimate defense. Not hiding, not fighting, but rewriting the sky. A future where tornadoes simply never happen. But with control comes risk. Interfering with Earth's climate could backfire catastrophically. A miscalculation might prevent tornadoes in one region while creating droughts, floods, or hurricanes in another. The cure could be worse than the disease. Speculative, distant, but not impossible. The first steps are already being discussed as climate change forces humanity to consider interventions at planetary scale. We can't reshape the atmosphere yet, but we can shape our future. Supporting resilient infrastructure, reducing carbon emissions, and investing in sustainable energy may lessen the extreme weather that breeds tomorrow's storms.